In this video, we will be talking about self-mastering. So should you master your music? And if you master your music, should you do it yourself? Or should you, you know, get someone else to master for you? I'm joined, as I am every week here on Creative Studio Live today, by my co-host, Mike from Creative Source. Hello, Mike. Crowd noise. <laughs> get out, Pete. I was waiting to see if you had a, an instrument to do a theme. Oh, oh, do, hang on, hang on. Do that yep. again. Take, take two. Take two. Okay, it's not live. It's okay. okay. We're, we're recording the tape. Bass guitar. Bass guitar? We can't hear a thing. Not the best. <laughs> <laughs> we're off to a flyer here, mate. It is all golden. Crazy. This is going to be a good one uh, because we're talking about self-mastering and, and we were just chatting, you know, not to not to break the curtain down. We were just chatting about this and, you know, mastering is something that uh, some people do, like a lot of people probably take a bit too seriously and some people might not even do it at all. So we're going to be talking all about mastering, but more importantly, should you do it yourself or should you get someone else to do it? Now, what we do at this in this show is that we uh, we take a side and we'll be doing that shortly. We'll be tossing a coin or in this case, a uh, an Ernie Ball guitar pick because I don't have a coin to work out who's on what side but before we do that why don't we talk a little bit about what's been happening in our lives so you've got one minute mike what's been happening in creative source in the last week oh it's been a fantastic week really really good fun um i have uh i've gone over the thousand subscribers mark i think i mentioned that last week but i, I flew through that i um, managed to make a video to say thank you and thank you again um what was really interesting is i did a really nice um review about melder productions free bundle plugin they've got 34 Ooh. plugins in one bundle it's really really good to be a pc user at the moment in terms of uh, recording <laughs> <laughs> and um and and i recorded a video just before um we started this session today which i will be going live with as soon as we, the second we finish this show and in that video i'll be announcing the winners um of the ample sound super jumbo um guitar which is a giveaway i've been doing and and i know a few people are waiting for that and yeah cool it's that been a great week how about you, Pete? How's things going in your garage band world? Oh, yes. Well, there, there has been a lot of garage band and there's been a lot of other things as well going on this week. So I've got a new song out. So I've released a song, which I did master. We'll, we'll maybe talk about that as we go through. Uh, but I've got a song called Wasting Time because, uh, you know, that, that's kind of what we do here, right? We, we waste some time. Hopefully we don't waste uh, waste everybody's time. Um, so, yeah, I, I released that song and I've been uh, I've been doing a bit of experimental stuff. So a couple of GarageBand videos and tomorrow uh, on the mastering topic, I've just mastered a song with lander so i have a video coming out tomorrow all about the online mastering platform lander so if you're interested in mastering and you want to do it for uh cheap free uh automatic yeah i'll be talking all about that tomorrow so there you go that is a a tease for that one now that is a tease isn't it kind of bait really exactly. bait. Uh, no, <laughs> I, was, I was hoping we would get more than four minutes in <laughs> Before we had a joke. Oh, that's a, that's a shocker. That's now, I, I do need to say here, so welcome to the folks that are here live. We, we love having you here. And uh, mm -hmm. if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you subscribe because what we're doing here is that uh, every week we swap. So if you're subscribed to Mike's channel over at Creative Source, if you're subscribed to Studio Live today, then you'll be able to always get the notifications. Know when we're live, but it is. It's 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 uh it's Thursday night here for us, which means it's Thursday morning and middle of the day for random people in random parts of the world. But uh, we will be back again next week and we'll let you know the topic of next week's show at the end of this show. So you're going to have to hang around. But uh, are you ready to get into this? Are you ready to start talking about self-mastering here, Mike? Oh, I am. I'm, uh, and and you're going to decide which one of us are you is going to be on which side. Did you explain uh, that to people? That uh, we don't know which side we're on yet. Yeah, I, I probably haven't, and uh, I'm a bit. I, I said to you before, I'm worried that people will come in here and they'll hear us ranting. So this is like a debate style. This is high school all over again. It's been a while since either Mike or I were at high school, hence the grey hair mm -hmm. that we have going on here. But mm -hmm. this is like high school. We're going to get a side allocator. It's going to be random. Now I don't have a coin, as I mentioned. I have my Ernie Ball medium here. So we're going to flip a guitar pick here, and then we're going to whoever wins this gets to choose whether they are on the yes you should self master or no you shouldn't self master side. So let's uh, let's throw this in the air now and would you call ernie ball or no ernie ball which way are you I, going i call ernie ball you call ernie ball and you are mistaken oh, it is a blank pick i'm looking at ernie ball which means i get oh. to choose now 
Last week, I threw you under the bus, Big Pun. <laughs> I said that, uh, yes, that, that you're going to get the tough one. This week, I'm going to be nice. I'm no way. Going to, uh, no, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to throw it back to you. And assuming that you would want to, in fact, I'm going to give you the choice. This is it. I'm, I'm being so nice, I'm going to give you the choice. Are you going to really? go? Yeah. Well, this is, this is unprecedented. Like, this, I'm setting a precedent here that uh, where, when you win, you don't always win. So which, which direction would you like to go? Which, which side of the fence are you going to fall on for this debate? I, I am going to go on the side of you do not need to master. <laughs> Sorry, you do not need to go to a mastering engineer. So you can self-master. That's the side I'm taking. That's what well, that's what I was going to throw to you. And then I realised yeah. as I was about to be nice and give you that side, I thought maybe you'd actually want the other side. I'm going to actually oh, shaft you again. I'm, I'm easy. You know, it's a bit of a challenge for me this week because my partner, Susie, my mm. life partner, what a rubbish term that is. But anyway, my life partner, Susie, reckoned that I wasn't really on the ball last week and that Ooh. you beat me hands down. Ooh. So that's, that's hurt my pride a little bit, Pete Johns. Right. So, you, you know, need, my, so you need to help. You need to yeah, my missus thought I was rubbish last week. So <laughs> so I'm going to go for it this week. I don't care which side I'm taking. I am going to slam dunk you. Well, you Pin know you to the say. ground. You need a happy partner, happy – no, no, sorry, that doesn't rhyme because, yes, only wife works with that one. But let, let's let's kick off here. <laughs> why don't we go in and you can tell us your first point. We, we normally do five points each, so why don't you give us your first point as to why you so blatantly think you should go ahead and master your okay. own. Okay. All right. Now, now, home of crap, that's, that's, that's not me saying that. That's the name of somebody in the chat is pointing out that they're not quite sure what mastering is. We will get to that, I think, at some point during this Good. debate. You, you should point. have a better understanding of what mastering is. Excellent. But I want to start off with, look, my main point, right? So I'm going to go right for the jugular here. I'm not saving the best or last. You know, if I was Daenerys, I'm going straight in with dragons. I'm not sending the Dothraki in or anything like that. I've lost you. I can see you don't watch Game of Thrones. So... Anyway, my main point is, is the fact that you need to employ a mastering engineer is a myth <laughs> created by mastering engineers <laughs> to protect their <laughs> own livelihood. Um, it's, it's a bit like this. Um, plumbers say only plumbers can do what they do. Yeah. yeah? Yep, yep. Uh, drummers say only drummers can do what they do. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm saying is, in this sense, mastering engineers are just plumbers. Um, another example might be um, doctors, for example. Doctors, you know, they're just they're just for people that can't Google, really. <laughs> Um, now, yeah, so <laughs> people who do not know how to search YouTube and find out how to uh, master um don't know how to do that sort of good modern stuff they have to just pay someone else to do it for them because they don't have the skills um mm. so but no a bit more seriously i do wonder if this myth is not perpetuated by the mastering engineering mm. uh, industry itself mm. um to sort of blind you with science and make you feel that there's something you just can never understand about what they do because you're not it and that's my first point pete well Beat it if you dare if if I dare, and uh, yes, and this is where I'm instantly regretting going soft on you because <laughs> in my first point. But anyway, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go on the on the con side here or the against. So why would you go to someone else to master? And, and to me, the first thing is that it's a second set of ears. So when you're when you're recording music, you are living it, you're breathing it, you are so involved, and hopefully you actually really love what you've made. It's your baby. It's your work of art so can you be a hundred percent objective when you get to that final phase and you could make an argument that should you even mix your own music but we'll talk mixing another day but if you're going to master your music and and to, to help folks out so yeah a couple of questions here about mastering so when we're talking mastering the simple version is that you're taking your final mix and you're adding some additional little bits of flavor. We're normally talking limiting. We're normally talking EQ, a little bit of compression, maybe some reverb in extreme cases, but that's about it. You're basically tweaking and refining it and making it radio ready. I use my radio. Hang on, I'm going to get it. Radio ready. It's making it as good <laughs> as you can possibly make it. So my, my point, though, is that if you are so close to your music, 
isn't it a good idea to have it? Like if I'm making a, if I'm making a song, shouldn't I go, hey, Mike, listen to this song and let me know what you think? And you go, Pete, those guitars are crap. They are a home of crap. They are not deserving of this song. And I can go, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair enough. So a second set of ears can tell you things that maybe you're too close to your song to understand. So there you go. There is my amazing point number one. Okay. I guess if you need other people to validate you, then that's your thing. I mean, what can yeah, I, I know say? you like to do everything yourself, all your masters. Let's not talk things. about your insecurities. <laughs> um, look, you know, it's a fair point. I, I do want to explore a little bit here on a more serious point because I think there may be some confusion about mastering, Yes. Um, even though I don't want to defend it as such. Um, but um, th there's this idea, first of all, there's many things in mastering, EQing, like you say, um, compression volume. I just want to talk about the volume thing because it's kind of coming up in the comments here a little bit. Just yeah. a real quick explanation that... Um, when we think about how loud something is, we tend to think or our programs, our DAWs or our apps on our garage band, et cetera, is telling us all about the peak level. And we know we don't mm -hmm. want to go above zero dB as the loudest level. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is that human beings perceive volume as the average, though. So mm -hmm. um, they don't really perceive how loud something is according to its highest peaks, but how loud the average is. So just a quick explanation there. It's not just volume as such, but through use of compression limiters, et cetera, we actually get the average volume of a track up. So it yeah. sounds much louder without actually going over zero dB. Anyway, what back to my explanation. You must have done a lot of mastering in your time yourself, which you know <laughs> is flawed, but uh, yeah, it's good that you shared your limited knowledge. With, uh, yes. Art form. And I have done a bit of mastering. And, and so horses for courses is my second point. Um, back in the day, in the old days when we were young fellas, the way people got music out there was to record in a very expensive recording studio. Mm. They had to be a part of that system. And then, um, you know, the only time you got to really get your music out to the world was if you got signed by a major label. Um, and so you never, ever got you never had experience of this. You never, you know, had experience until you went into a studio for the first time, perhaps in your early 20s or something, if you were very lucky. So there was never any time that you were going to get involved with the very last stage before it got press um, to, to record of actual mm. mastering. But that's not the case now. Now you could write a song in the morning and you could release it on YouTube in the evening. If you and my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I have. It's, it's a very good channel, and you're proving my point very well on your channel. Uh, but the point is you, you are not in this sort of fast-paced turnover thing where you just want to get stuff out there. You're not going to be messing around with somebody else mastering it. Now, that's not to say it shouldn't be mastered. I think everything should be mastered. Mm -hmm. On my own humble little channel, I, I master every video that goes, the audio on every video that goes out. I, I put it through some mastering process, whether that's just to do with volume, a little EQing, a little compression. Um, I always do it. So um, I think you can have some skills now, which, you know, this is the great thing about YouTube and other places. You can learn things really from masters. I say masters from people who have been doing it for decades. It's all there. You can learn it. Uh, but it is horses for courses because mm -hmm. if you're chucking out a video on YouTube every day, you're not going to be spending thousands of dollars to get the audio mastered with a mastering engineer. So that concludes point two. Sorry, it's a bit long. Oh, that's all right. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that my daily videos have really crap audio because I don't master them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, right. <laughs> You didn't say that. No, no, no. I've no problem with <laughs> well, your audio. You know what? Insecure I'm, I'm tonight. Insecure tonight, Pete. I know. I'm, I'm defensive. <laughs> aren't I? I'm, on the, I'm on the defense. Um, oh. I'm glad you brought up experience because that's actually my second point. And uh, my favorite new person here, Aldo Relaxing Guitar, has made a great point around when you are starting out, you should get someone experienced to master your tracks because you talked about it's a good experience for you. But do you trust yourself to be able to, be, to do it? Like mastering engineers are highly trained professionals that did at least three hours worth of someone else's mastering course. So they should be <laughs> trusted with your songs. But uh, that no, to be serious, like a mastering engineer knows what is needed with mastering. They've got the experience. They've mastered a bunch of songs before. If you're releasing that hit song, if you're going to be the next, um, do you know any pop singers that no if you're going to be the next popular <laughs> music artist of the, the day that the kids are all watching on the instagrams then mm. 
you need a mastering engineer because if you try and master your own track, you're not going to have the same level of experience. You need to trust a professional like your plumber. If you want your toilet overflowing, go ahead and try and replace the, the insides <laughs> of it yourself. Or if you want a flushing toilet and to keep your family happy and safe, then you go with a plumber. So for the same reason, I think, because my argument just got way skewed, um, I think you go with an experienced mastering engineer. That's my view anyway. Um, that was your second point. Um, <laughs> I, I, we haven't got any points. If someone in the chat could come up with some points, I mean, a score. <laughs> for each of us you know i will put um let's see i, I like um home of crap actually just because i like saying their name <laughs> on air um home of crap could you come up with some scores a score for me a score for pete uh you can be in charge of the scores today um look pete it's a fair point that you make except that my third point proves you entirely wrong actually um you're you're painting these mastering engineers out to be you know these very very highly qualified people i ask you without ask i'm not asking you to be rude but you, your local supermarket checkout assistant would you describe them as highly skilled no you wouldn't no they're, they're actually a machine now because I always <laughs> because they're a machine now i'm glad you said that <laughs> oh, no, I, and I'm how many bank <laughs> how many bank tellers did used to be in your bank there used to be eight or ten of them all of those and now you go into your local bank and there's two little kiosks <laughs> there and one of them's closed right and that is because everything's been automated automation has proved that these people really didn't have that greater level of skill and so i've got one word for you on my point three and that is lander you mentioned it yourself mm. automated mastering has blown away this myth <laughs> that mastering engineers were some sort of gurus oh. gurus i like the word guru no um i'm afraid that 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 we all know that if you listen to an automated master track and something perhaps done by yourself and a mastering engineer most people cannot tell the difference so automation has made your folks out of a job like coal mm. miners <laughs> we still need coal <laughs> <laughs> That's got nothing to do with automation, but I was just trying to think of an endangered species. They, they are an endangered species because of renewables, but this isn't a uh, this isn't an environment uh, analysis show. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm I'm loving the the, the chat here, and uh, my friend Earthling here, who is a great supporter of mine, so I'm giving them a shout out. Uh, they mentioned that myself and Lou and Beringer uh, both master our songs in GarageBand. So shh, 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 like don't mm. that, that's not doing my argument any help. Mm. Right? Yeah, they, I agree. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's it's the worst timing for a couple of it, but no, I do appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll say actual thank you at the at the end. But for now, no burger. Yes, mastering is great, and you can't do it yourself. So, uh, yeah, like I'm glad you talked about. Uh, I'm glad you talked about the supermarket because I don't know what the relevance is. But <laughs> what year do you have to master? That's what I ask you. Do you really think that you can master just in on your iPhone or your iPad or in your what is it? Your Studio One. Like there's a reason they call it One. It's like like, yeah, version one. Like, when are they going to get to a higher? Sorry, that was a really bad point. Um, no, you need better gear. Like, what do mastering engineers have? They have all of the shiny knobs and dials and buttons, don't they? They have the outboard gear that can make your song sound better. We all know that a bit of analog flavor, like, it, the amount of times you try and get, oh, I just want to get like an analog flavor and you add 14 plugins to make something sound analog. You go to a mastering engineer, they've got the analog. They've got an EQ. They've got a, a pull tech. They've got a an LA2A compressor. They can just put this through all of this really nice gear that gives you that warm analog sound and that's what like there's a reason that the Foo Fighters are still recording onto tape and they're still using all of this outboard gear some of the best music is still created with that real analog sound and mastering engineers are the ones that can actually make sure that they have the right gear to make your song sound the best so that is my third point I, I think uh, which is that you need all of this expensive gear and just don't watch any other videos on my channel where i tell you you don't need expensive gear but assume that you do need expensive mastering gear right I'm like, well <laughs> you know it's interesting because if you do google mastering engineers and look oh, for no. some images of them um you do see all that gear yeah you know you see all that gear don't you like, like that very expensive compressors and limiters mm, and all uh, so shiny like, with so many dials yeah that's right 
there's no proof that there's any electronics behind <laughs> any of that. That could be just dials and lights and needles, okay? So <laughs> I'm not convinced there's anything there other than a USB cable going somewhere and a whole bunch of plugins. And it's plugins that I wanted to talk about on this point because Ooh. I have to say one that I was, I've was i been very, very impressed with on a more serious note um, during the last few months or maybe a year ago since I started using it for my mastering um, was Isotope's Ozone, um, mm. I think, version 8. Now, mm -hmm. a little bit better than Lander in my opinion because that has an, a mastering assistant on it. So you just you play your music. You can use a reference track so it will analyse that for you. You play your music and it looks at it and it does 95% of the mastering for you, very similar to the way a service mm. like Lander may do. And then you can tweak the final bits to taste. Um, and and I just think that um, these things have come a long, long way, even in the last couple of years, in fact. So, um, I, you know, I'm a big plugins man and um, and I say... I can't hear the difference, to you, be honest with you. So, yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, you, so you say that you, so, and this is the point you're making. Mm. By the way, mm. if you're joining us here, if you're joining us here live, <laughs> uh, we are we are debating, Mike and I are discussing whether you should self-master or whether you should uh, make the wise choice, mainly because I got this uh, side of the argument, which is <laughs> to go to a mastering engineer and pay a lot of I mean, pay a reasonable fee for an amazing mm. service. Um, so here's my fourth point. I think we're on the mm. fourth points here. Mm. You are too close to your songs, Mike, and you and everyone else and me and everyone, we're too close to our songs. Like I mentioned before, it's your baby and mm -hmm. you don't want to change it. So when you are in the mastering stage and you're trying to play with it and it's not quite working right, you're like, oh, well, I'll just tweak this and I'll tweak this and there you go, it's fine. You know what a mastering engineer will do though? They will help your mix get better because they will tell you what they can't fix. Because mastering, and this is, again, we, we wanted to help folks learn a little bit about mastering. And the key to mastering is that it's not going to fix your mix. If you've got a problem, if your guitars are too twangy and you've got too much high end in your vocal and too much low end in your piano, going into your mastering and changing your EQ there is not going to help. You need to make sure your mix is sounding good before you master your track. So a mastering engineer will tell you that. You'll, you'll hand the track over and they'll say, I can't master this. I can't put this through my expensive, amazing gear that has all the dials and knobs because <laughs> this is not right yet. You need to go back and do some more work. Mm. And then you can actually fix those problems and then hand it back to them. So not only do you get an amazingly mastered track, but you can actually get some advice up front because they will tell you some of the things that are poking out and then you can fix it in the mix because how many times have you mastered your song and gone, oh, that's not quite right and gone back and changed the mix? Now you're like, ah, I'll just throw on isotope and press some buttons and bleep, bloop, bloop. And then I get there from Mark. <laughs> that's the way Mark and Joe rolls. That's what I'm, that's what I've heard. Yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's a good point. I, I actually personally um, don't, I wouldn't normally master a song. Like I said, I do master my, my videos on YouTube. But if it's a song which I want to release, um, I'm taking it a bit more seriously, um, I probably don't master it until three or four weeks after I've mixed it. Um, normally, I just leave a big space so I've almost forgotten about it. Um, and then I get some fresh ears. Um, you know, you made the point that another pair of ears is going to tell you what you've done wrong with your mix. So what you're really saying is mastering engineers don't do much. You do <laughs> most of it in the mix and they just put that final. I think somebody said in the chat, actually, Which is they put the final 0.5% on it, you know. Yeah. And um, that's not my final point, by the yeah. way. I've got my final point. But um, oh. I did want to touch upon a couple of things, um, hmm. some of the comments we've got here. Yes. Uh, Mike Mike Floyd, um, Floyd he Mike. says, what's the chances your first two are going to be a hit anyway? So why not do it yourself? And Well, look, I've got to agree with Mike, but bit defeatist mate little bit defeatist what's the chances <laughs> your first two are going to be a hit i don't know um <laughs> probably in my experience the same chance as your last your, your 200th and your 300th song <laughs> near to zero for me but um but no uh i do agree in general it seems like everyone there i mean there's there's earthing in there talking about some fella called pete johns and uh lewin 
uh, Barringer, um, mm. and their output is absolutely fine. And I do agree, and it sort of brings me on to a point that I didn't make earlier, my point 4A, that um, I just wanted to – this is not my last point, by the way, but a, a, something I want to say is I was looking at my stits, my stits, my stats before we came online, <laughs> Some new words. Not only do you uh, do your self mastering, you look at your as well. It's getting Listen, all, really weird. And you know, uh, on my channel, um, around about uh, almost fifty percent of people are watching on mobiles, mm -hmm. and um, they're probably just listening through that tiny, tiny little speaker that they have. <laughs> so honestly, the difference you're going to make in mastering is not going to make any difference to um, fifty percent of the people who are actually going to listen to your music um that's another defeatist but a realistic way of looking at it. now on to my final point yes yes <laughs> please <laughs> i want to ask you a question who was responsible for the second world war pete johns oh uh hang on let me just check the let me just put the people here in the chat and see <laughs> i know where some of these are from so just i will, uh, uh, let's just go it was uh, a rhetorical question bad people <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> bad people were responsible for that and uh, who was responsible for ruining the ozone layer our, our parents and our grandparents mm. i tell you i, I, I laid the blame on them mm. so i'm gonna the third point here, who was responsible for the loudness wars? I tell you who, those evil mastering engineers. If it wasn't for the mastering engineers, we would still have dynamics in our music instead of just loud, loud, loud all the time. We would appreciate music in the way we used to when we used to listen to wonderful and forgotten bands like Queen, mm. for example, who had awesome dynamics in their music and they're still appreciated enormously today even by my children who normally hate all the music i listen to um <laughs> because it does it breathes you know it's that music breathes and it's mastering engineers who came along with their expert ideas and said we know what radio stations demand what the industry demands and they demand it be very very bloody loud all the time <laughs> and so they made there was the mastering engineers who just pandered to the market space and made everything loud and i conclude my arguments and i think everybody in the chat agrees uh, say agree if you agree that <laughs> i am in fact the winner even though you've still got one point to make it better be good pete johns go for it Ooh, so I'm, I'm i'm tossing up between just rolling over and laying down and uh and claiming defeat because uh, you've made some very fine points here you know i don't compliment you easily so uh mm. you must have done a good job but uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to make my final point, but then I'm mm -hmm. going to circle around and we'll actually talk about what we really think. But um, no, what, what what I do think in the very rare occasions where I've uh, actually kept my songs mastered, which is not very <laughs> often, um, is that what it does is it does make it. So the positive is it makes you finalize your mix and make it the best it can be. So I mentioned before that sometimes it's tempting to go back to your mix and then change something and then come back to mastering and then tweak. And I've known people that basically are doing all four processes. So I, I, I think that you do, you record, you mix, you edit, and then you master. So I think there's actually four stages, but some people kind of do that all at once. And I think the beauty part about mastering is it makes you focus in on recording, editing, and mixing your songs getting your final mix and then handing it over so it puts a, a full stop on the end of the mixing process the creative process and then you hand it to another person to actually make sure that it's everything's ready to go and you can release that song it's radio so it's radio ready and and you can get it out to the world so that is my final point but yes I'm, point. I'm, not a bad point not a bad yeah, point it's, it's okay I mean, it's okay now I can we say what we really think <laughs> We can say what we really think. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Which is, this, oh my it's been God. a bit strange because I thought I was taking the argument that I really did believe in. But I have mm. to say that and I, I've got to agree with some of your points. I think for most of us, we want to get things out quickly. We probably don't get much of a chance to run it by someone else. But I would say mm. that it's best to, if you can, if you can get another person involved in the process, even yep. um, not so much in mixing. Too many cooks can spoil the broth in mixing, but yep. it's good to get um, outsiders' opinions of things not work in um, in isolation all the time. I think that is highly valuable. Whether that has to be a mastering engineer, I'm not absolutely certain. And I will say that I do I do some mastering. I dabble in it. Probably yep. a mastering engineer would scoff and say, oh, that's not real mastering. <laughs> but um, I call it mastering, and um, I've done it for the last few years now. And I would say it's not for everyone. 
So mm. I don't think it's an easy skill to pick up at all. And I'm always still learning about it all the time. So, excuse me. Um, yeah. So it, you look, if, you know, you've only got so much time, you've probably spent a lot of time on writing your music and, and performing and all those kinds of things. Um, if you haven't got time, then, you know, use another service for mastering, I would say. Anyway, you make your point. Your real yeah, point. yeah, no, no. So, uh, yeah, when, when I was thinking about this, and I was, uh, I was pondering my points today, and I'm like, which side will I land on, and what will I have to, what will I have to talk about? But yes, I, I, I think that the, the main point there is that it doesn't hurt to have a second set of ears, and it doesn't hurt to have a community. And obviously, you have the creative source community. I have the Studio Live Today community. We have other Facebook groups and other communities that we're involved mm. with, and sharing your music and learning from other people is probably a good point. And yes, I, m my actual view because i would be a super hypocrite because i'm releasing a video about mastering tomorrow <laughs> my actual point here is that yes i think everyone should have an understanding of mastering and, and your your plumber point is a really good point because you know what i am very unhandy and i know what the opposite of handy is but i'm not mm. handy right mm, mm. But, but it doesn't mean that i can't google what people should be doing and what they should be charging me to do things. And then when mm, the problem mm. comes, I actually know what he's doing and what he should be doing. And if he quotes me a thousand dollars to replace that, what are those little rings called? Yeah. Little, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Rings, yeah. Uh, in my, in my toilet, then I can say, Hey, no, I know that's a $2 part from Bunnings because I can Google things. So you can't rip me off. So I think it's kind I'm of, always, I'm always skeptical when plumbers ask to look at my little ring in, in the toilet. I, honestly, I, I always <laughs> try and stay away. Yeah. So you can Google that. Um, don't Google looking up people's Google rings in the toilet. Ring, please. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, no. This, this is PG 13. Someone said it was a PG-13 stream, and we, we, we do try and keep it that way, but uh, yep. Mike's just taken us downhill today. Uh, so, yes, I, I think, and you, you said horses for courses before, and I mm. say that a lot. I say that um, my, my favourite saying at the moment is, you do you, and, uh, you know, as you know, I've got a little bit of hate lately from folks who believe that you shouldn't record in GarageBand, that you shouldn't, you definitely shouldn't master in GarageBand, and the fact that I even call it mastering uh, <laughs> makes me a bad person, and I should yes. feel bad. I know, I know. I know. But uh, yeah, I, I think that whatever works for you. And my, mm. my final point, and then I'll let you have a final point, a final, mm. final point before we finish up here, is that you also have to consider who are your audience because I don't know, your, your creative source and you, you run in the home studio world. I run in the mobile studio world. Like, let's be honest, neither of us are producing for like Grammy award winning artists mm. that are going to sell a million copies of a record. Maybe one day, like that's the dream, right? But right now we're not. So don't lose sight of the fact that you might be starting out. You might be learning to do something. You don't need to spend $500 to pay a mastering engineer to master your first ever song. Master that one yourself. Learn what you need to do. And then when you've produced an absolute corker that you think, hey, this is great, but it just needs to be awesome, then pay your $500, go to your mastering engineer. Mastering engineers should exist because people need the optimum quality when they're really putting their absolute best mm. out there mm. to be radio to be radio ready. But mm. until you're that stage, you don't have to. Mike, what say you? Yes, I, I agree. Um, and, and I would suggest to all of you um, who are watching, um, if you don't know what mastering is, you haven't tried it, you should you should be doing it to some degree and you should learn about it, even if it's just um, optimising the volume. Yep. Um, because if you um, are passing your tracks around to your friends and family, your demos and stuff, and they're just too quiet. There, there is this issue that to human beings, things that are a bit louder do sound better naturally. So if people have been listening to some music and then they always have to turn up to listen to your tracks, yeah. um, it makes them weak. So you should at least look out for that skill, just even for demos. Now, you may mm. still choose when you release something to have it mastered professionally. That's fine. I'll leave that with you. But at least for your everyday demos, get them optimised to a degree. And you'll find that once you do that and you're in the habit of doing that, then you'll start to think, oh, how about I, you know, do a high pass filter, you know, just so, something like that. And and you'll, you'll start along the road a little bit. So uh, that would be my advice. Uh, that was quite a good debate, Pete. Well done.
I, I think I, I won I, again. But I, yeah. I think you absolutely won. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, um, and home of crap. I just wanted to say your name one more time because I love saying it like uh, like Mike. And yeah, we're keeping it PG thirteen. But you, you've asked a quick question here about mm, um, good question about referencing. So have you ever played a song in the car or a different speaker that sounds different, like it's too bassy or something's too loud? So maybe that's a that's a good teaser for perhaps a future topic here. Mike is uh, about referencing your track. So listening to your song and your masters on different speakers, different platforms, different places, because headphones, speakers, cars, like you said before, playing it through your iPhone speaker, these are all going to sound different. So it's a very good point when you're mastering is that, yes, you can't just listen on one device because that is not going to be where the majority of your listeners are. They're not listening in your studio with your lovely uh, soundproofing and, and your your acoustic treatment and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, um, they've asked, you know, it happens to them all the time and any tips to prevent it and that that's a re there's really big and long answers to that question that's a yeah. whole sort of uh video topic really but um i would say um very quick tips you know make sure that you do have or own um some studio monitors try and listen to most of your music through those speakers like most of the music you love to listen to through those speakers so you kind of get used to the sound of the way uh pro stuff sounds you know yep. released song sound on those speakers that will get you a long way there of course you've got to really treat the room you're in and all that kind of stuff as well but um yeah it's a big subject but uh I, I, that's my, my quickest tip for it it, mm. Yes, it is, and it will take a long time. And, and Earthling, mm. again, uh, yeah, has, has also added to that. But, yeah, if you optimise for one, will it be right for the others? So, again, there's ways to find the happy medium, and but it yep. is, it's the ultimate battle, and it's the eternal question of how do you make sure that you have a balanced final mix and a balanced mm. mix that's not too bassy for when you're in a big car with a subwoofer, but it's not too tinny that when you play it through an iPhone speaker, it sounds like uh, a home of crap. <laughs> I had to say it one And the, just the, there are plugins um, that help with that i know isotope does one and i cannot remember the name of it but it's basically they have um surveyed thousands and thousands of commercial tracks and they've figured out you know where the bass middle and top frequencies mm -hmm. generally should be for pop music or for classical or something like that and yeah. that will show you on the screen if you're within safe limits as well so um i wish i could remember the name of that plugin because i use it often but um yeah there's help right. out there Mike will come, come back. watch my no, channel. You, exactly. You'll, you'll, Go to you'll Creative Source. That's a, that's a good segue. <laughs> but no, my, Mike will go away and find that plugin and put it in the in the comments. He, he will. wants to do that. <laughs> it's, an, it, it's an isotope one. I just, yeah. Excellent. Mm. All righty. Um, I, I think we're done here. We're, we, we normally try to keep it mm. in 30 minutes. We're only seven minutes over. So that's good because mm. uh, I don't know if you know this about both Mike and I, but we can talk and mm. uh, we're, we're pretty good at it. So <laughs> at least talking. The, the content, the actual quality is a different story, but the quantity, <laughs> you got no problems there. Um, all right. We're, we're going to finish up here. A, a reminder that uh, we will be back next week over on Creative Source doing another live stream Thursday nights here in Australia, Thursday mornings and Thursday lunchtime in other parts of the world. Um, but what are we talking about? What's our topic going to be next week, Mike? Do you want to give a bit of a tease on what we'll be discussing? Yes, I, we haven't got a finalised uh, title yet, but it's a music question this time. Mm. And should you keep music simple and heartfelt or complex and interesting? So it's, it's going to be a really interesting debate, that one, I think, and good arguments for either side of that. So, yeah. I love it. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. So, uh, yes, please, uh, again, subscribe to Mike over at Creative Source or here on Studio Live today to make sure that you keep up to date with all of our weekly live streams here on the channel. If you did enjoy this or if you just liked our banter or you think that, uh, you know, we're feeling a bit down and... and pressing like on a video will make us feel better then please <laughs> press the like button because we like the blue ones and if you didn't like it you can press what, what do you say mike press the uh, dislike twice that's a great yep. that's a great yep. option as well mm. um or four but, times or four times yeah, as long as it's an even number we'll be totally <laughs> fine and if, if you think someone else would value would get value from this as well that's in the music industry then feel free to share it with them and uh, and share the love around but uh until next week uh i'm pete signing off for creative studio live here on behalf of my co-host host mike we will see you next week